a different way of life, really. It's just getting out of Castle Derg for a wee while and seeing friends. Bonon is our place to go to, to chill. Um, you're working flat out during the week, uh, Monday to Friday. I'm running down the band here on a Tuesday night. I do a bit of private teaching at home as well. We're both involved in the Derg Valley Choir in Castle Derg. I conduct it as well, and Marcella sings in it, along with her mother and her sister. So come a Friday afternoon, we just head down to Benone, our happy place, I would say. Well, it's lovely now, isn't it? That's great. 16 years ago, we were both working in Castle Derg High School, both teaching and I had a part-time position teaching music and Chris was teaching technology and design. Aquil had seen herself in the staff room and thought, oh, she's quite good looking. So it took me a while to sort of get the, the courage up to ask her out, but eventually sort of my last week teaching in there, built up the courage after I had been poked and prodded by a couple of members of staff. Right from the start, we just knew we had so many things in common. We were so compatible, it was just right. Mr. and Mrs. Wright, you know. When I first told Marcia I was in a band, she, um, she sort of looked at me as if to say, are you serious? I nearly died, I think, to be honest, because I thought we were never really into following bands. It was just wasn't something that we were brought up in. From where I come from, Castle Derg, all we kind of knew was blood and thunder, you know, loud. And I thought, oh, I don't know now about this. I eventually talked her into coming to a contest with me one year, and she was very pleasantly surprised that we play flutes from as small as a piccolo right down to the sub contrabass, contrabasses, you know. Um, of course, and she'd never, she'd never seen flutes like that before. So it was an education for her in a way. I've changed her uh, opinion on flute bands. Don't put too much weight on the on the crotchets in the first at the end of the first and second bars. Our whole family sort of grew up through banding of sorts. My dad was involved with the Hamilton band for over 50 years anyway. So that's how I sort of got introduced to banding. And it's the same in any band across the country. Um, there's always that family connection. Did you ever consider having kids? No. no. We have a dog and that's it. That's our baby. Good girl. I have you no know, regrets about not having children to pass banning on to. Marcy and I have a, a niece and she plays the trombone, so I taught Amy trombone from P5 to P7. I've passed on something to, at least not a son or a daughter, but to a niece. My next door neighbour said to me just the other night, she said to me, have you never thought of having children? And I said to her, no, and she says, well, what, what about making musical babies? Look at the babies you could make. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. I have so many wonderful experiences. I'm getting into international summer schools where we went to Brussels for a couple of years and did that. And then from that, I was uh, asked to go and lead a course in Kuala Lumpur. The summer's gone and all the roses falling. But due to having to get surgery, I couldn't go. Tis you, tis you must go and I must buy. I remember being home then for like six months. The whole singing aspect then for in, in regards to classical singing was kind of stopped in a way. I thought, well, I can't sit around here forever. I'm going to have to do something. So I went into the teaching profession then from, from there. Tis I'll be there. Sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you so. At the moment, just sort of getting back into the pieces we were looking at before lockdown. You generally find the easier the piece, they like playing it more. So there's not a lot of complication and mistakes. I arranged a piece called Shenandoah about 
two years ago and I took it to the band and we sat and we worked at it for a few weeks and they just didn't like it. So it had to be dumped. So um, it's there, but uh, we don't play it. <laughs> it's trial and error at the end of the day too. There's no point trying to get the band to play a piece that they don't like. It's really just flogging a dead horse, really. All phones off, and we're all sitting up straight. Right, from the start. Good, again. Nice and short as well. There you go. The members of the band are learning new music, maybe every week. Maybe they don't realize that they're doing it, but they're learning something subconsciously. But it's also important for, you know, sort of a social aspect. And the band is, I suppose, one big family. And we all get on. Right, we rattle at this somewhere. And then I'll give you a break. But like any family, sometimes there's the odd word said, but it's quickly forgotten about, and, you know, we just get on with things. My favourite. Citadel. Run it. Yeah, it's been played this year, that's it. What's the worst song he's ever picked? This one? <laughs> what do you hear? The Churchill Band was formed in 1835, so last year was our 185th anniversary. We intend to celebrate it this year with some concerts. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. There'll be two, three big rolls on there every March. Just. Actually seeing him conduct, I was really impressed by him. I just thought this is absolutely amazing, this is great. He's so passionate about it. He would spend hours arranging music for them. Sometimes it can take over a wee bit as well. It was coming up to a contest and things need tweaked. You know, it can take over his life for a number of weeks. And I suppose, therefore, you do become a band widow at times. But it's his passion, and you can see that whenever he's in front of the band. 